In order for militaries to effectively operate in the field, and in order for them to effectively wage wars, a constant stream of intelligence is required. It's crucial for militaries to know where the enemy is located, what the terrain is like, what resources are nearby, and if there are friendly villages or other allies or enemies in their local area. The Roman military was no different in this regard. However, as with so much else in ancient history, the primary source evidence is either lacking outright, or is somewhat vague as to the use and types of scouts and other intelligence units employed by the armies of Imperial Rome, so what we can say about this is, like all other things, somewhat limited. The armies of the Roman Republic, or at the very least, the armies of the Mid and Late Republic, do not always appear to have taken the task of gathering intelligence all that diligently. The chaos of the Second Punic War devastated army after army, and even the thrashing the Romans received at the hands of Hannibal don't seem to have made clear the need for adequate scouting and reconnaissance. At the same time, some armies did make use of intelligence, but it would seem that the decision to actually use scouts or other units of a similar nature lay with the individual generals and was not part of the military doctrine as a whole. Julius Caesar's activities in Gaul are probably the best recorded example of a Republican general taking these matters seriously. Caesar, writing in the Gallic Wars, tells us that at one point during his campaigns, he received reports from his speculatories, and that those reports were confirmed the next day by his exploratories. Upon launching his invasion of Britain, he left behind one of his commanders with orders to monitor the Gauls and to keep abreast of the situation, and if something should occur, to act accordingly. We don't know how that general went about doing this, but based on what other events are recorded in the Gallic Wars, it's probable that he employed the same speculatories and exploratories that Caesar used. The issue with this, though, is that it's not entirely certain what either term at this time really meant. Usually, speculatories and exploratories are translated as spies and scouts respectively, and although both terms came to denote actual units of troops, at the time of Caesar's Gallic conquests, both terms lacked a more concrete meaning, nor do they each appear to denote specific units. As best we can tell from the sources for this era, probably what happened was individual soldiers or groups of soldiers were made speculatories and exploratories and then dispatched. The evidence becomes a little clearer during the Roman era and we see inscriptions from the period denoting both terms, and those inscriptions suggest rather strongly that the speculatories and the exploratories were now one of two things either a specific rank of soldier in the army, so perhaps somewhat similar to the rank of centurion, so perhaps somewhat similar to the rank of centurion in that it denoted a type of troop, not a specific function, or to actual units of soldiers designed for the gathering of intelligence via scouting and spying. So far as military historians are aware, the Roman state lacked a centralized intelligence organization, although some arguments have been advanced that the Abipistulus, the imperial chancellor, who functioned as an imperial secretary, and thus was responsible for overseeing documents which would reach the emperor, was responsible for such a role, but we don't have enough evidence to completely argue one way or another. Possibly the key moment for the transition in the Roman army for the whole idea of scouts and spies were the Marcomannic Wars. It was during this conflict that the office of Abapistulus began to be staffed by military men, and not civilians, so, considering that the imperial secretary was responsible for many of the documents that would be seen by the emperor, it would make sense that that office graduated into one which focused around military intelligence. However, once again, we should keep in mind here that although this is an idea that has been advanced by some professionals, the evidence is still not all that abundant. Regardless, the Marcomannic Wars do seem to mark a watershed moment. On all of the frontiers during this period, we see the emergence of a new branch of staff and advisors to frontier generals and governors. These were the Beneficiarii Consularis. Probably, they were responsible for maintaining intelligence networks in their region, and it was crucial that armies in the provinces knew what was happening on their borders. It's not entirely certain how the Beneficiarii actually gathered their information. But, we do know that they were drawn from two main groups of people, soldiers who had served for a certain amount of time, how long is not too clear, and the other were the Frumentari. The Frumentari originally were attached to legions with the purpose of gathering wheat for the troops, and because of this function, they were very familiar with terrain and with locals. Under the Emperor Hadrian, the Frumentari were transformed into an empire-wide intelligence network 
essentially functioning as something akin to a secret police. So employing former frumentari as beneficiari would have granted legions with experienced agents who knew where, when, and how to gather information. Things shifted in the late imperial period, and the government became significantly more centralized, and the empire faced newer threats. In the north, Germanic and Central Asian tribes were beginning to stir, while in the east, the Parthian Empire collapsed and Rome faced a resurgent Persian Empire under the Sassanids. While translators were usually stationed in the provinces and with the military, we have some evidence that their numbers increased and the frumentari were replaced by the Protectores Domestici, a bodyguard unit for the emperor, but which also functioned as a corps of mobile officers and couriers, and the Agentes in Rebus, a more effective, more encompassing system of secret police and imperial agents. These changes were crucial as the late empire had become based on an official ideology and not simply the patronage networks that characterized the Republic and the early empire. The Agentes in Rebus, usually translated as messengers, show up around 320. It's possible they were created earlier during Diocletian's reforms in the 280s and the 290s, but the evidence for that is lacking. Designed as a courier service first, but whose other tasks included supervising the arrest of officials, checking papers, and supervising troops, they moved about on roads and stayed in taverns and inns, and thus they were well placed to gather information by listening and by observance. The actual numbers are not that certain, but it seems that there were at least two stationed in each province, with more showing up towards the end of the Western Empire. By the 400s, the intelligence networks used in the Roman Empire had evolved probably through as much deliberate design as through necessity in different situations. While their agents never fully became an ancient form of the Okrana, as the empire progressed through time, it became clear that scouts and spies were a requirement in the conduct of war and empire, and that their development reflects not only the needs of a far-flung state built on the backs of its soldiers and fertilized by the blood of its enemies and sweat of its citizens, but also the limitations of ancient technology and statecraft to actually gather that intelligence. Regardless of these drawbacks, it represents an astounding achievement.